Okay, so the long weekend continues into Saturday, and Saturday, all things being equal, we'll have another double header of racing. It will this time be a turbinine on the inside track, and uh, Kenilworth, uh, that uh, will be a second day of uh, racing in the Western Cape uh, Friday, having been uh, racing at uh, Durbanville, where the pen reading reads are 22. So all uh, looks uh, like it's uh, all systems go in the Western Cape. Let's talk about the high felt, and it is racing at turbinine. Of course, the high of activity is uh, the racing. Uh, uh, arena in at uh, the uh, Western in uh, Joburg and of course at this stage uh, first of all we really would like to express and it's a personal uh, condolence and I'm sure the man on my right will uh, join me in sending uh, the deepest condolences uh, to the lucky Udenaka stable we learn uh, with uh, the uh, greatest and saddest of uh, uh, shocks that uh, Evaristo, who is a uh, reliable and uh, trusted uh, lieutenant to, to Lucky Udalakis, a man who was forever smiling, a man on our screens uh, regularly, and of course wins the case and points the first two races. They won. He passed away yesterday, and it's so, so sad. And that is, I'm sure, going to devastate the whole stable. Of course, I'm sure you join me in saying Evaristo. I don't know if you knew him personally, but what a character. He just had this aura about him he was just a happy guy once you see him if you were in a bad place you suddenly smile unfortunately i didn't have the pleasure of meeting him sis but uh yeah tragic news filtered through last night and condolences to his family and close friends um, indeed indeed and of course uh, we uh, start on that sad note on the uh, converse uh we congratulate you for two very good days of the vault <laughs> Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, but you know what they say, even, yes, a, even a blind squirrel finds a nut. Okay, no, 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 <laughs> no, don't do yourself a disservice. Let's get into uh, the uh, racing at uh, Turpin on the inside track. We've lost a uh, six Empress Wu, who actually ran behind one of Lucky's horses, Transilian, in the first race of the afternoon on Wednesday. And so that leaves us with a one lay swing. That's in the red. That is Corbus Ruse charged with Dennis Schwaz. And that is at uh, 7 to 10. 28 to 10 is the two Kurumathi. And that is two Pelligrew with the services of Pili and Claudia. And then the other one that we can talk about is the seven Vulcanite, uh, Paul Matchett and Muzi Yeni. That is a three to one. Now, this is the first leg of the bipod. And unless this season you've uh, turned over a new leaf, you'd rather be cautious in these sort of races. <laughs> yeah, I, I think my perm's next to nothing, uh, if I'm not mistaken. It's Are you banking brain. in this leg? I am. Wow, if that's you don't want, like you. If you don't want to bank, bank a number one, lace uh -huh. ring, you can obviously back up with number seven, Vulcanite. Now, lace ring, I mean, she is knocking at the door. She's limited, but it looks like she could possibly get it right this time around. Um, the reason why I bank it is because on paper, she certainly holds Kuramati number two. And from a one draw, uh, whereas Kuramati's got a seven draw, I think uh, Lace Wing will get a smoother run. So uh, I'll be very shocked to see Kuramati reverse the form with Lace Wing. But I'm not discounting Volcanite's chances. I actually think she could improve substantially now that she stepped up in, in ground. The reason why I say so is her sire erupt, uh, 2400 meter, mile and a half horse. Uh, I had a look at the dam side. The third dam is the dam of Bravura, who won mm. the Cape Derby. So I'm not going to separate numbers one and seven. So I take the trifecta one and seven, one and seven by bank at two. Thank you so much, John. Let's just confirm that uh, bipod it is, as you say, a very inexpensive perm. 12 Rand, a one by five by four, and then it is two horses, three horses, two horses. All right, uh, you're watching our uh, preview of uh, Saturday Racing. We are recording on a Friday, and of course, it is uh, proudly brought to you by Betway, the new home of uh, the PSL. And it is uh, the home of uh, the new improved uh, Summer Cup. Uh, that uh, money has been boosted uh, to a staggering 6 million rand. And uh, you can say with all the authority in the world, that is the richest race in Africa. Now, let's talk about uh, the third race at Turventine, which by the coincidence is uh, the uh, venue of uh, the Summer Cup at the end of November, the stand side track. Inside track racing continues with the maiden plate over the 14 of 50. And in a race and number three, just looking at the betting again, the five except cookies in other colors of a breeders. Foss Fontaine is at a 12 to 10. Gavin Arena retains the ride. After that, it is looking at a seven to one, it would have six to one rather, about the eight uh, strop suits. And then it's uh, seven to one about the uh, four Sunfire. And then you've got some 15 to two about the two TikTok edition. Now, Mr. Uh, Marie, it's improving with each and every run. And of course, we were talking about Lucky, the uh, horse to beat except uh, Cookies. 
was sequestrating the colours of uh, the uh, Drakenstein last time. Our second straight hadn't shown too much on that first run, but it did show good improvement. Uh, lucky, doesn't cut his horses in half, as we all know. Yes, but if you recall, um, we had an interview with Lucky prior to that race, yes. and he said the filly showed nothing on debut. Uh, she was just languishing at the back of the field, and they were going to try something different. And Marco bounced her, put her in the race, and she fought on Gamely. Uh, what I can say is, strictly on paper, this favourite appears to be sh too short in the market, because Stroop Soot and Sunfire both hold her. Mm -hmm. On the 17 again run. That form line though is not yeah. really holding up, is it? Uh, that, that's a reason why I didn't like except Cookies last time out. But she improved substantially from run one to run two. And she's so lightly raced, she's got scope for further improvement. The fact that she stepped up and progressed, I'm happy to bank her in the PA. I mean, um, I liked what I saw last time out. And the lineup that she meets once again, she should be very competitive. Now, I watched that replay behind 17 again, or 7, yeah, 17 again. And Sunfire, Sunfire actually came back at her and was finishing that race off better than Except Cookies, but that was her debut effort. You know, Sunfire is related to Zirconium, so mm -hmm. she's well bred. Yeah. Um, strip Suet, uh, gonna strip fitter. You know what? I just. I think in this lineup, I'll, I'd be very disappointed if you accept Cookies um, misses the top two. Uh, in saying that, I don't believe there's any value in her current class. All right, let's confirm that uh, PA once again. I mean, the richer these guys get, the uh, cheaper the purpose <laughs> become. It's, it should be the other way around. It's a 48 rand of full outlay for that uh, place accumulator. And of course, uh, the first timer. Let's just watch out for any more money coming in for counters. Q, that's number six in race three. And now we go to the pick six, which starts with race four. Maiden plate is over the 1450 race in today. Maiden plate, and that time is uh, 10 minutes uh, to uh, two. We've got a poor match at uh, runner who is favorite, and that is Kalish Cyborg. It's uh, Mr. Uh, Marisa Lacacetti, who has celebrated another birthday this uh, week. And I'm sure he'd like to round it off uh, with a victory on uh, number nine, uh, Kalish Cyborg, a, a three year old son of Global View. It's uh, 22 to 10. Number eight, Jaham. It's the first time in the colors of. Uh, the uh, Al Al Diet, and that is at uh, 33 to 10. Mike DeCock is a trainer of the sterile son of a kinman, which I think is going to make uh, the likes of Mr. Marie sit up and take note. And of course, a little shorter than uh, the uh, first timer is number four, bus stop uh, to ha in Hounslow, rather, that is in the Hollywood Silks, and that is Gavin Arena getting the ride at five to two. Right, uh, Mr. Marie, that uh, karate kid uh, form line could hold up, won a very nice race, karate kid. The horse from the uh, Van Furen stable was expected to win first time out. Didn't quite put up the fight that we all expected. Yes, Inspector James. Now, yes. Karate Kid debuted excellently. Yeah. Uh, he ran behind, I think, Taxi to the Moon. Taxi to the Moon was a winner. Um, uh -huh. Mr. Matchett will have a line of yeah. Obviously, he trains Karate yes. Kid and uh, Kalesh Cyborg. Now, firstly, let me just touch on the betting. I am shocked Kalesh Cyborg is at the top of the boards. Uh, uh, that can never happen come race time. No, but let me just um, put a case for corrupt. From yeah. all and sundry who know sundry uh, corrupt behind the scenes, yes. they reckon it has a future. No, I'm not disputing that. Mm. Uh, the form line is suspect. I know 12 o'clock uh, high, uh -huh. one from there, and he could love the step up in trip. The dam went over a mile. So I think he's going to step up in trip. But I'll. I'm willing to take anyone a bet that uh, bus stop in Honslow will start clear favourite. Um, clear favourite. I think uh, you'll shorten substantially in the market. Uh, he's currently at 5-2. to two. I think that's a lot of value. Listen, I don't know anything about the first time, and he's so well bred. Uh, son of Kingman, number 8. And I had a look at the dam. Now, the dam, I think, won the grade 2 Gerald Rosenberg. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh and it third is... in the grade one empress club and you know what so... there is a sibling also running this week uh this weekend somewhere along the line i will catch up with it i'm sorry to interrupt yeah okay so i mean he could be anything and i just think the inside track uh during winter from a wide draw if he wins it's because of his ability i don't think he's really going to be um bustled to to get it right on debut so i'm all in the camp of Baslow. What's it in Hounslow? In Hounslow. 
Um, have a nibble at five to two. He's going to love the step up in trip. The sire was a miler. The dam one of a fourteen fifty strong first selection number four. But obviously, I'm playing safe in the pick six. All right, bus stop in Hounslow. That gets uh, the uh, thumbs up from uh, Mr. Marie in race number six, uh, race number four, first leg of the pick six. Right, we get into our first uh, jackpot, and that is uh, race number five, and it is a pinnacle stakes which will be contested over the 1,600 meters, and it sees, of course, the special so distance specialist come back uh, to the tracks, and that is in the form of number one, Bingwa, and it's a man who uh, aboard who gets a good tune out of it, and that uh, being uh, Mr. K.B. Matsunyani. But uh, favoritism in a race uh, number five, that is, is with the seven key element who's done everything in the last uh, three outings but win. Pilisan and Koli gets the right once again uh, from uh, Paul Magic in those colors of uh, loyal owners. And that is the Camnius, Captainus family. Three to one is the one Bengua. And then we've got 11 to 2 about the four swing upon a star. Last seen running uh, behind uh, Unzen over a distance of uh, 1400 meters on uh, the stand side track. So is it a case of uh, Bengua and uh, key element, Mr. Murray? I've just thrown in one other, and that's Flashy Apache. You know, mm. he's having, he's, he's very fit. You can see he's progressed nicely in each start since returning from that layoff. Mm -hmm. The fact that he's carrying 50 kilograms, I think it, um, that should ensure that he's competitive over here. Uh, I know he's not the best in at the weights, and let's just touch on that. Best weights at his eye of the profits mm -hmm. ahead of Bengua, Swing Upon a Star, and Mercantor. Now, of the profits lost the plots a little bit. Yeah, it had a great three-year-old career, but never really raced on as a four-year-old. Yeah. And now it's a five-year-old, maybe. Maybe. Could I'd love to back. see him come back yeah. to form. Rachel used to get a very good tune out of it. Yes, that. yes. What is that horse? Uh, let me see how good your memory is. Who did uh, I of the Prophet get involved in a ding-dong tussle with uh, on, uh, is it Classic Day or Guinea's Day? And just Was it not Shoemaker? No. Not Raw victory. Okay, right. Mana. Yeah. Oh, yes, that's correct. Yes. Right. Yeah. Um, now, the topic has to be key elements. Mm. Um, she races handy. It's a fast run track. She's got 50 kgs from a one draw. There's so much in her favor, but, except for the fact that she's not well in of yeah. But I wouldn't read too much into that. She's in receipt of as much as 12 kilograms from the class act in the race, which is Bingwa. Now, Bingwa, on this turf and team inside track, he raises his game. I think he's been on nine times. He's been in the money on eight occasions. But he's got such a hefty weight to shoulder. He has to be ridden quietly. So he has to give the lightweights weight and start, which, which is a difficult task. But he does run on, though, huh? Yeah, he does run on. And the fact that it's a small field will also play into his hands. So I think the race will be uh, fought out between numbers one, six, and seven. Um, slight preference for the seven, but health and respect for the one and six. Bingwa in the colors of uh, the Stone Bridges Zoo, you can be guaranteed that we'll have at least one family member there. They do love their racing, irrespective of whether it's a maiden who is running in their colors or, of course, uh, the uh, family uh, pride, and that is Bingwa. Take a bet to win a number, number, graduation play. This race six is over the 1,200 meters. And any numbers you want to uh, put together as far as the sock in England, which goes into its second full weekend, as far as the new league is concerned, you go onto that Betway app and I can guarantee that you will get uh, full value for money. And of course, you get in running betting and you can cash out before the game is completed. There is a cutoff time, but you can cash out once that result seems to be going your way. Right, let's talk about results a man who's uh, certainly got a lot of results going his way is Mr. Marie. In race number six, let's see what he's got for us. We've got 22 to 10 about the sixth lead. The charge number seven, Buffalo Storm Cody, is at three to one. Slightly shorter, actually. And uh, Daryl did mention the name, whether it's an omen or what. Taxi to the Moon is actually five to two and then three to one, the seven, Buffalo Storm Cody. Both in the same source of the Cursed Home Investments. Uh, nominee, Mr. Kenneth Pillay. Yes, a uh, lovely race. I look forward to watching this. Now, uh, strictly on the weights, if you open the book, you're going to say leading the charge is a good thing. He's seven pounds best in. Mm -hmm. uh, I wouldn't read too much into that, though. 
I, I give him a strong winning chance. You know, last time out, I think they fitted him with the tongue tie. Mm -hmm. He loved Gravel. I think he likes the inside track too. But uh, the tongue tie, we saw marked improvement. And uh, he did get quite as, uh, a hike in the ratings over there. Uh, from an 88 to a 104. In that race was Buffalo Storm Cody. Mm -hmm. Nah. Buffalo Storm Cody was returning from a layoff. Mm -hmm. Buffalo Storm Cody found interference coming into the straight. Uh, if you recall, Richard Free looped the field on Danson from Sanson from the, for the boys from Benoni. Oh, yes, uh, I and, do recall. And hung inwards. And that caused Buffalo Storm Cody to take, uh, to be eased for a stride or two. So I don't think there is going to be much separating the two of them. And then you have to look at the jockey arrangements. I mean, Calvin is a stable jockey. And for that reason, I am leaning towards Buffalo Storm Cody as um, preference over Taxi to the Moon. Now, Taxi to the Moon and a lovely one last time out. Um, he just grinded the whole way up the straight. He beat a very nice sort who franked that form. But I want to add that in his penultimate start at Gravel, around the bend his only start around the bend he ran off the fence the entire race that was in the grade two golden horseshoe i don't know if he's better up the straight we'll see tomorrow so for that reason i'm going seven six three seven six three buffalo storm cody gets the nod in that uh, first leg of jackpot two along with a fellow three-year-olds that lead the charge and uh, taxi to the moon that's numbers of six and three here respectively so the first choice would be the third name there number seven Right, on to the last leg of uh, the first leg of the last uh, pick three we go, and that is race number seven. It is, of course, uh, counting down to the start of uh, the newly constituted uh, uh, PSL, which is worth a mouth-watering, uh, earth-shattering amount of money. I think it is 900 million, and that is courtesy of uh, the sponsors of a way to win that, that being a Betway. Anyway, back uh, to race number seven. It is the Race Horse Owners Association graduation place for Felix Mayors over the 1,200 meters. The two sunshine day is a scratching and just having a look and overview of uh, the betting a very fluent uh, winner two runs back the one chasing happiness smung against the rider on a saturday afternoon is a 22 to 10 not too much separating them with uh, the uh, three-year-old uh, force eight from the matchet stable that is a three to one a seven to two is the seven bosom buddy also from the matchet stable in the colors of miss candace jansen and then you've got uh, the four to one about the five happy mo we could go on it looks very competitive but I'm sure you have uh, found uh, something for us here. Yes. Now, if you have a look at the best weights at column, you'll see Batula, mm -hmm. number three, is five pounds or two and a half kilograms best in. Mm -hmm. Now, let's touch on her. This could be on the sharp side for her. Mm -hmm. Listen, she contested some very strong races as a three-year-old. Yeah. And I think the time off, she could have strengthened up nicely. But the fact that she... It's going to be racing fresh and she should get a nice running transit behind force eight just as long as force eight um breaks on terms i think um i think she's got the ability to fight out this finish i wouldn't be surprised to see her right there when the chips are down you know she's as big as 10 to 1 i think that's a bit overpriced especially knowing that um She's the best waiter, but then again, you can say that she earned her rating over slightly further. Now, I think chasing happiness is a very nice filly, uh, and she'll take all the beating. You know, she's been to the inside track on two occasions in the past. She's unbeaten over here. Um, in her later start, nice efforts over the thousand meters. We all recall that race. The, the winner was on its bicycle from the jump with a full kg apprentice in the arms. Never looked like stopping. Who was apprentice, by the way? Was that Nastili? Yes. Uh -huh. Then in her penultimate start, uh, she got the better of Elysia's love. She won a little bit easier than the margin suggests. You know, Elysia's love last time I put up a cracking effort behind Joanna. Um, actually, looked like she was going to win. So I think chasing happiness back on the inside track, last lightly raced uh, four year old filly, more to offer. So the fact that she's more. Distance uh, suitable, then Batula, I'm going one from three.
three. One from three. That is uh, the story of a uh, race uh, number seven. The first leg of the pick three. One from three. And then there is a banker and sandwiched in between uh, the first and the uh, third leg are numbers one, four, six and eight. We'll dissect those shortly. All right, so we're looking forward uh, to uh, the day, and that is not uh, too far off uh, when we have a double header of uh, both uh, local and uh, international racing in the form of uh, the EPL on our screens, and we can have flexibility to bet on uh, the Betway app. But uh, talking about doubles, that's a nice way to lead into this race. <laughs> If I'd say so myself, it is a race number eight, the first leg of the last double. And it is a seven to two about the six, the Miller Hugh, overdue that next victory. It is uh, tied with a 15 to four about the eight, the Kings Express. And coming off that run behind Majestic Palace and uh, quite a bit of uh, Majestic Palace form line in here, the five Tamarisk Tree, uh, the uh, second favorite number eight, Kings Express, and uh, the nine Supreme Dance, all coming out of that uh, form line, although the last named didn't really, really throw any sort of a punch. But uh, we're going to leave it to you, Mr. Marie. We haven't had that uh, bullishness about a uh, big price horse yet. Uh, hopefully, no. it's uh, in the offing before. We're only two races left, though. <laughs> <laughs> uh, unfortunately, you, you can't find uh, one of those on every card. I mean, you can find them whether they win or not. is a different story. Um, yeah, as per my perms, I went the field in this race. It is certainly the most difficult race on the card. Um, the pace should be genuine. You've got Royal Edition from a wide draw. I'm sure he's going to push over. He's got no weights. He's, he's probably the likely pace setter. you also got Twin Turbo, mm -hmm. who reunites. Well, with Gavin, Gavin. reunites with Twin Turbo. And the last time he sat on him was the only time. And the boys in the post-race interview, Jonathan and George, they said this is the best ride they've ever seen. Well, because we interviewed them, because we were all blown away. Eh? It looked <laughs> yeah. like Candice's player had the race in the bag. Eh? Correct. So now Gavin's from a one stall gate. Back around the bend, last time Fabian said this horse isn't a straight horse. So back around the bend, Gavin up from a one draw, lots in his favor. Um, I liked Wafib's comeback efforts in his penultimate starts. Last time out, he's well held by Milieu and one other. Who is that? Let me just have a look here quick. Mm, behind was Zivio. Um, Royal Edition. Uh -huh. But I think that was a very flat second run after rest. He's come back in, down in the ratings, having his peak run. He's probably going to slot in behind Twin Turbo, get the run of the race. Expect a lot of improvement from Morfif. You can touch on uh, so many others. Julia Tango, we can't discount that stable at the moment. And of course, the combination that yes. seems to be working. Huh? And the tongue tie comes off this uh -huh. one. The same as Indian Ocean. Then you've got Miller Yu. I think Cabello will suit him. He likes to be ridden quietly. Yeah, very difficult race. All right. So we've got uh, Wafif as a selection, although Mr. Marie, your uh, selection last time out, Royal Edition, the stable seems to have hit their straps, so uh, that could come and bite you as well. <laughs> huh? But uh, yes, Wafif, I'm very much in your corner there. That's race eight. All right, it's uh, been a soccer-themed intro from me throughout the whole show, and I uh, must say the final whistle was just about a blow with the running off race number nine of Phillies and Mayors at 75. And, of course, a stable that has had a pretty good week of it is uh, the Erica Verdanese, the stable. They've got Ariel's Jet, another Diesel's Jet. Not a sibling to Diesel's Jet, but uh, certainly part of that uh, family. Their sires has certainly been a source of pride for Erico and uh, the connections. That is uh, one of your favorites, a three to one. And uh, Gavin is reunited four rides uh, for two seconds. Looking at uh, the likely rivals as far as the uh, betting is concerned, the eight uh, silver parasol would have been but that's unfortunately a scratching. So Mr. Marie looking at me to tell me that it is it's a scratching. It is indeed. Four to one about the one mighty goddess and uh, 13 to two about the six play with fire. Now, yeah, Ariel's jet, stable and good form. Small string, hopefully uh, the uh, string has increased over the last couple of days of the sales. Let's hope so and let's hope uh, they continue on the winning ways. Mm. Uh, you know, Sometimes I can sit here and look, make myself look like a fool, but I have to um, give the viewers my opinion. I mean, uh, w what is the use of me sitting here and uh, withholding any thoughts? Look pretty. Look pretty. So, <laughs> so I'm going to say to the viewers, this horse is currently 5 to 2. I think she is way overpriced. In my mind, I think she's start closer to even money come race This time. is Ariel's Jet. Yeah. 
And I'll tell you why. Please do. Firstly, the stable's firing. Whenever Ga Gavin gets on a horse for Erico, you, need, you know the business is mm -hmm. down. Um, Yaza Philly, she needed a comeback effort. Mm -hmm. Last time out, in her second run after rest, she was racing at the back of the field. They were going very slowly. Mm -hmm. Raymond looped the field, mm -hmm. went three wide and hit the front at the 600. Mm -hmm. I cannot believe she finished as close as what she did because the race went pear-shaped for her. She, she, so now you've got Gavin from a one stall gate, having her third run after a layoff. Second in that race behind Olivia's way was Linga No More, yes. who won her next start by more than four lengths. Yeah, one has it light. She's having her peak run. You've got fillies that are coming off her rest, like Mighty Goddess. Yes, she's done well recently. Um, and a few other Sensoria's unbeaten for a new yard. Party Punch won despite things not going away last a month. But looking at this race, I think the 5-2, to two, if you don't have a bet if, now, um, she'll sh certainly shorten in the market. So hopefully you're watching on YouTube because this goes out on Friday and you got the value. Right, just uh, to round off as we look at your selection for race uh, number 9. The uh, early early birds must get on to the uh, seven in race six. That is Buffalo Storm Cody. And no, 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 no. I thought you said no. Buffalo Storm Cody. No, the, the early birds must get on Buslow in Hounslow. Bus, uh, uh, bus stop in Hounslow. Bus stop in Hounslow and, and Aerial's, Aerial's Jet. Jet. And yeah. if they have the uh, guts, third mm. one would be? No. Buffalo Storm no. Cody? No way. <laughs> no, okay, just the double. Just the double. Okay, so let's just uh, confirm that a double. That is the Grant Maroon and the Hollywood uh, with uh, Buff Stop and Hounslow. Race four, number four, and race nine, and number two. That is Gavin Arena and Erica Verdonez with the Aerials Jet. That's been a way to win looking ahead to racing on the inside track of Turpentine.